Hi guys, Mark Heath here and welcome to the fourth video in our Advent of Code series where we're solving the challenges on the adventofcode.com website. Let's have a look at what day four's problem is. Okay, so this problem is all about Santa who needs some help mining some Advent coins and to do so he needs to calculate the MD5, MD5 hashes of various numbers and he's looking for MD5 hashes that start with at least five zeros. Okay, so what we need to do is take a secret key, which is six characters long, and then keep appending an incrementing number, one, two, three, and so on, and hashing that string until we find um, a hash that starts with five zeros. And as usual, you get your own personal secret key so that your answer isn't the same as anyone else who's doing this problem. So again, I first attempted to solve this using C sharp. Let's have a look at what I came up with. So here's my secret key as well as the secret keys um, for the test cases. And in .NET, the way you do MD5s is by using system.security.cryptography.md5.create. And that creates you an object that can calculate MD5 hashes. And so I needed to create a sequence of strings to hash, and I did so by using innumerable.range, starting with the number one and going on for 10 million items. Hopefully that will be enough. And we first of all calculate the input string, and we can use this nice new C sharp six syntax to say it should be the secret key followed by the number. Then we're going to turn that into bytes because MD5 expe expects its input to be in a byte array, not a string. And we can do that with system.text.encoding.ascii.getbytes. And that will give us a byte array and we'll get the result as a byte array of hash bytes. Then we could actually do the test at this point. And on the subreddit, I noticed that some people were just looking at the byte array that comes out to see if it starts with five zeros. In my opinion, it's a little bit simpler and more readable if we turn that byte array into a hexadecimal string. And thanks to the magic of Stack Overflow, I found that this is quite a quick and elegant way to turn a byte array into a hexadecimal representation. You do bit converter to string and then replace the dashes with nothing. And then we see if that string starts with five zeros. Finally, we select an anonymous object which has the hash string and the number that we appended on in the first place, because that's what we need. That's the answer, the number that we appended on. Then we simply need to find the first element in the sequence that matches. We don't want to print out the whole sequence because that means we'll always evaluate 10 million hashes. We might not need to evaluate that many, so we make sure we call first or default. Let me run this. And this will take a little bit of time as it calculates the hashes of loads and loads of different input values. But eventually you'll find, after it had done 346,000 of them, we found one that started with at least five zeros. Now you will notice perhaps that I've got a commented out solution. Usually I don't tend to use this link query syntax where we're using the from and let and select and where keywords. I prefer to use chained extension methods. However, this syntax has got one nice advantage and that is we don't need to pass any state through every stage in the pipeline. You see in the final output I wanted n which was the number that came in at the start. And if we were used, wanted to do that with this syntax, then we'd need to pass anonymous objects that kept hold of n all the way through each stage so that when we emit the output, we could include the value of n. So actually, this is an example of where this syntax really shines. Now, it turns out that for this puzzle, the part B of the puzzle, was really the same problem, just you had to do more searching because you were looking for one that started with six zeros. And so that just takes a bit of a longer time to run. Let's have a look 
at the F sharp solution that I came up with. Now in F sharp it's actually possible to create a syntax that looks very similar to the one I showed you in C sharp. Again I've got my secret key, the prefix I'm searching for and I've created my MD5 um, hashing object and then we use this kind of sequence expression and we can say instead of having to do an enumerable.range we can say for n in 1 to 10 million I'm going to turn each number into a string, turn the string into the bytes, compute the hash, all of this is the same as the C, as the C sharp, calculate the hash string, if the hash string starts with the prefix we're looking for which in this case is five zeros then we'll yield a tuple of the index and the hash string. And so this yield keyword, if you're a C-sharp developer, you've probably used that in uh, methods that return I enumerable from time to time. It allows us to generate a sequence on the fly from this original sequence. And so we've got basically um, a sequence of all of the hashes that are going to start with five zeros. And once more, we don't want to evaluate the whole of this sequence. We want to stop as soon as we found one. So we're going to pipe the output of this sequence into the head method, which basically finds the first one. It's like link's first method. It will throw an exception if you get an empty sequence. And I'll just dump that to the output. And as I've put in this notes here, um, we could make this solution a little bit more concise, but I think it's fairly readable here. Like the C-sharp solution, I actually think the C-sharp solution is quite readable and concise. As usual, guys, let me know in the comments if you think there was a better way to solve this, and hopefully I'll see you for day five of the advent of Code Challenge.